All right, we've been talking about the cooling system for so long. Even I want to get it out of Old gasket. It's not too bad, but once again, my policy is if we've gone so far as removing it by now, why not just do it? Well, I don't need to do those first. Let me work on this one here. You see it come out of here? Yeah. Just cleaning this hole. Okay, so we have this over here. This one's about to go here. So I'll remove the 10 millimeter bolt. Let's uh, clean this up one more time, just for good measure. It's okay for the most part. And then there are, sorry, there is an O-ring that goes over here. The O-ring part number is 21049ZL80A. I'm going to take my glo dirty glove off. It's gotten to a point of, I can't keep claiming that the glove is just stained. I have to call it. It is dirty now. So here's the O-ring, ready to go on there. But you know you got to lube things before making it happen. So Vaseline is my friend for such situations. Roll it over there. Okay, a little more Vaseline over that. Okay, and then insert it. it goes without much of a fight, usually. And there it is. Then I'll pull it back a little bit because I want it to align with this hole. and lock it down. There is a torque value to be, observe, to be observed, but for what it's doing, I chose to ignore it. I think that was going for a long time. So one thing I noticed after setting this on there, I realized that the <clears throat> you call this the knock sensor is facing out this way you know I'll, I'll look underneath it so i can't really reach it even if i had a set of pliers so what i'm going to do is turn this loosen it turn it that way then i'll be able to to access it That's a tricky part of all what the situation is. I need a 12 millimeter that might not even get there because of how close it is. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Okay, so there. You see, I just turned it, that's all I did. Know how much I expect it to move. And it is tight. Working out my core, trying to get it any tighter. So that's good. So that's a sucky thing. To replace your knock sensors, your intake has to come out. Not too bad, but you know, 
it is what it is. It's a V8. It's a du dual overhead cams. It is the best way to do it. And so, talking about knock sensors, some people talk, usually talk about relocating their knock sensors. My opinion is don't do it. Putting your knock sensors anywhere other than where they were engineered to read will result in them getting false readings. Good or bad, you might not be as protected as you should be. Okay, knock sensors, coolant tube down. Finally, getting to the other, the larger water tube. This uh, might be the point of no return to some people. It just depends. It depends on how many spare gaskets you have. So here are the part numbers that you're going to need over here. First one, 21049AR000. This one, my friends, is a seal, an O-ring that goes here. Okay, we'll lube it up. Don't worry. We'll get it. It's, it's somewhere. Then we have two of these. Open that, then open these. Two of these. 1162 AR001. I'll show you where those go. Okay. These ones have hasps so these go over here and I'll get them there when the time is right once I remove the bolts here's the second one here you go this one goes to the other side there's a second part over here Just start throwing these away and here's a third one or a fourth, depends on how you want to look at it. One O-ring and one O-ring and three gaskets. This one here is 13050AR001. This one here also has those claws that keep it located when you move your tube around or whatever. And this one goes right there. So let's let's work on these. Are they reusable? Probably, but again, my line of thinking is that if I've gone this far with this project, might as well just get brand new ones, you know? They don't cost that much. The water ones don't cost that much, surprisingly. Well, not surprisingly, I mean, the water system is not that harsh. Okay, so these, I will remember, these are the middle ones. These are the ones at the end. These are the ones on this end. Maybe I should get the camera focused again. So these go here. Then these three. I'm gonna hit it one more time with the paper towel. If I can find the paper towels. Oh, here. Some cam cam tool. I had cleaned these surfaces prior, but. You can tell that they could use a little more attention, especially with this one right here. So we'll go in with my scraper. Just a little more. And then air. This is one of the reasons I usually keep the, the intake ports uh, covered all the way until I'm fully done with the job in case there's any debris jumping up. It's not going to get in there. Okay, so we should be good for the most part. One more thing. 
I don't do this to all all uh, all seals, but I'm gonna do this for the O-ring. Just wanna help it sit down and stay down better. Okay, not too crazy, just a reasonable amount. Set it over there. Perfect, and it goes. Okay, at this point, make sure I have everything set. Look at that. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you've seen that, right? The O ring is in there. Now, these are the times I usually say if I had a helper in the garage, that would be pretty cool. keep working while I have somebody else recording what I'm what I'm working on here's the other one I'll install this one and it does have an upside and the you know bottom side and a top side mainly because of those lastly we have this one here You really can't screw it up unless you're trying to. Okay, then at this point I already cleaned this. I could hit it for the fourth time if need be, but why waste time? What I'm gonna do though, is compress air one more time. That's the... Place it carefully. Let me do this. Okay, so the main parts are secure. Back here, I'm not going to tighten this, the two bolts going down, and I'll explain the reason why in just a few, just a few minutes. So right now, everything is secure. You might have noticed that this part had a little bit of flexibility. There is an O-ring over here and another one over here. Usually, I don't mess with them. If you do take it apart, you could actually put them back in dry ideally use some lube you know again vaseline is what i use for such for such jobs but then it should be it should be fine right as long as you don't take it apart the the water systems or rather the seals for the water systems are not excessively tight so you should be good for the most part so let's torque this down and i'm looking for my cheat sheet again according to the cheat sheet 13 to 16 foot pounds. So 16 it is.
So the longer ones usually have a little more play when you torque them, so just be careful, don't keep torquing and torquing and torquing. As you've noticed, just by hand tightening, I was able to get these bolts good enough. So the water system, the non-oil part of it, is usually a little more forgiving or a little more user-friendly, so to say, to the home mechanic. So right now, the next step would be the intake manifold to sit on top, and I will sort of do that. Okay, at this point, we are mostly ready, but I wanted to touch on two things. I wanted to put the intake on so you could see how the rest of the system interacted with this part over here. The rear part, this is where you have your rear thermostat, so to say, the water coolant, sorry, the water valve as they call it. So I did not bolt this one down yet because I wanted to come back here and remove later I'll be removing that I'll be removing the the bolts over there so I'll just set those over there for now so that it, so that I don't lose any bolts and then on the front side I also wanted to show the interaction of everything with this this isn't what you actually call your thermostat so this is what you have in front pretty easy to work on but you know I just wanted to have a frame of reference so first thing I'll do actually is install the water pump so you can see everything kind of touching everything else and then which I'll come back and do the thermostats <laughs> 